for I'm Francisco. I'm a 38 years old man. Uh, calp, calp, it's called. No, bold, bold, bold. Sorry, bold. With a bit of mustache, so I'm trying to do my best, but not not enough uh, frequency. And I am here in the Epica Foundation. It's a meeting room now empty with this COVID situation. Normally, plenty of people. And I will present you uh, what we have doing in accessibility. Okay. Calliope is a platform for, for, for delivering uh, transmedia. Uh, it's a personalized platform for delivering transmedia storytelling. That means that we are able to, to deliver live any kind of video, uh, audio, picture, text, sounds, or whatever. We used to deal with La Fura dels Baus. Maybe you know La Fura dels Baus. It's 40 years old, performing arts company, avant-garde performing arts company. And now with the foundation that we that that we start four years ago, something like that, in order to try to keep these research and innovation processes. Normally, we use this platform only for creating, let's say, uh, dynamics between the people. I mean, we used to to use uh, our audience smartphones to create and interact with the audience on stage. So normally, as you know, maybe La Fura, it's, they are doing a performance without chairs. That means that you have everybody in the middle and we have from, from 200 to up to 100,000 people together. So uh, we, we were based on a scientific theory that is the behave, that if you are able to send concrete commands to all the bees, you are able to do nice choreographies. And then we use it for the for the audience and in order to create chaos or create dynamics in the audience and all this stuff. Then suddenly we meet with Pilar, as you will, as you all know, it's really enthusiastic on accessibility. And she asked us, so can you send subtitles? Oh, we say, I don't know, we are sending text. Say, well, a subtitle, it's not any more than a text. Say, yes, then, then, then maybe we can. And then she, she asked us, you can send line sandwich. We are sending videos, live videos, yes. So you can send lines, or well, maybe yes. And then we start this kind of dynamic as, as we love the challenges here in the foundation and in our company. So we start to jump into, into, the, into the accessibility with one of the uh, better uh, professors that we can have. It's Pilar and, and, and her team. So that, that was nice for us. And then we start uh, offering also accessibility applications, of course for ourselves that we are doing performing arts. So we, we need to be accessible even now by law. So that's nice for us. And then we can we, we thought that we, we were able to contribute to different to the to different sectors with the tool that was already working. So uh, I will show you a couple of demos and then we uh, at the end we can talk about uh, about that because I think that the easy way to understand is to is to see what we are doing. So the first thing that I will show you is a demo that we did with Pilar in the European Parliament. It was an accessibility section for the European Parliament. So we developed something like a platform that we are able to uh, sniff content directly to the transcription uh, tool in the European Parliament, throw it to Google Translate, and then deliver it in, in different languages into the uh, end user according to your uh, device. So uh, let me show you how it works. And we start here, the subtitle proxy. This is a demo that is reading from a, a let's say, a test. So it, it, it is supposed to be here, something like a transcription here. You start it, and then you can directly connect through the application, the this Calliope that you can download in your, in your iOS or Android, and it works. Or even now, we in order to do it easier for um, a smaller events, you can go to a website. I will show you here. And then let's get start. So you can connect directly to European Parliament. And then tell that you want it in Italian. And that's it. You are receiving live the direct uh, translation to Italian to the text that it's getting here. So we are able to translate it and to send it different languages live according to your device. That means that if another user just going in, in Greek, 
you will receive it in Leak. Also, you can, of course, change the font size or whatever. And then the, the good thing of this kind of tools is that when you do it in your smartphone, as you know, you can even use uh, keep using your accessibility services in your smartphone. That means that you can uh, still use the voiceover or, or this kind of accessibility. So even for blind people, it's a good solution. So this is live, it works, and, and, and it, it can easily get plugged to any kind of uh, transcription services already existing. So at the end, remember that Calliope is something like the, like the delivery platform. Of course, it's a tool for accessibility service providers that they are creating the, the, the accessibility services. But that's nice because you can personalize what you are receiving and, and choose the different language. Of course, for example, this tool is based on Google Translate. That means that you have the, the good things and bad things of Google Translate. So it has some delay because we, we need to find a complete phrases in order to uh, have a coherent translation. But it's better to, to have a quite good translation in Greek than listen to an English uh, talk if you don't speak English. So <laughs> our, our better use case is, we, is, is when we have a native tra uh, transcriber for each language because then it, it, it works perfectly. The Calliope is a really live uh, tool. That means that we have around 300 milliseconds, something like that, delay from when we launch the message and you receive it in your mobile. So it works really fast. So even we have some, we have to apply some tricks when we are doing for broadcasters or even in through the internet because we have to synchronize, assuming the delay of the network because we have no delay. Let's say so we we have to stop the system a bit to wait for the for the, the for the system. So this is this was one, one, one demo that we did. It works. It's really nice. What we are doing, following a uh, pillar rules. That means two lines, you know, 40 characters and all this stuff. It's a bit tricky, but but it's it's nice. And then when you do it through the application, that it's more thought for big events, let's say, or big buildings or big facilities. You can choose your channel. You can put your profile requirements on all this stuff, and then you get live according to your profile. That is a bit better because then we are able to segment a bit more the information. So we are able to send line, lines, lines, sign language, or 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 subtitles in in Spanish or English or whatever according to your requirements that you put from from the beginning. So. The other two that I want to show you that it's I think that it's quite interesting. That's why I put the other the other screen. Let me move. Let me mute this one. I will try. Oh. Let me let me I will mute mute this one. Uh -uh -uh. That means that I do like that. Like here. So I have you can still um, hear me? Yes, perfect. So the, the other idea, I would switch it off. The other idea it was is this one. This system is already working for one year in the Liceo of Barcelona. This is thought for fixed exhibitions. The, the screen you can see in my back, in the other screen, I think. Yeah, you can choose here easily what to put in any screen you have. This is controlled by, by a small Raspberry. That means that it's one hundred dollars per per screen. You just need to connect them to the network and plug it to the uh, power, and then from one single point you can control your whole facility. Here you have the list of of screens you have. Here I only have one here, but in the list there are thirty. You can send whatever. Uh, content to any device and you just send it and you have it in your screen. You can put different playlists and, and control what which kind of information is uh, it's being played at any of your screens in your facility. Okay, this is something like a pure digital signal uh, system, but lo let's say low cost because it's based on Raspberry. What we have done now is when we do like that and we send a video with uh, subtitles, so you are able to, let's go there, 
Right, so you have to click and say it's free to kill your hat. And then you have this kind of video. And if you go to the website, let's say, or the tool, and you enter to the channel of the Was ich werden wollte, als ich klein war? Definitiv nicht das, was ich gerade mache. You receive like the subtitles according to the to what's happening on the screen. That's really important because if you have a, a big event with different screens, you can connect to different screens and receive like the subtitles of the of the video. If you see this is uh, in sync perfectly with the with the screen and then you can give the user the ability to connect to the different screens and again do it in your language or doing whatever. So that's really interesting for feature exhibition because in this way you can cope with plenty of accessibility services. Again it works with voiceover and all this stuff. So you can you can read subtitles and gather it in your in your and of course the, the font size and everything, you know. I think that this is a really, really, really interesting tool that we just developed a couple of weeks ago, but it, it, it's getting a uh, good acceptance from the people. Sorry. So this is this is quite we are we are we are so happy about this solution because this can be an easy way to deliver accessibility in all buildings. Uh, again, this is a Raspberry controlling all your screens, and you can. Uh, so in, in, at the same moment two different problems. The first one is the one of controlling your whole uh, media services in your facility from a single entry point. So you can uh, go to black, you can switch on and off the screens and all this stuff from this single point and you can even know what's happening there. So what's, what's happening on each screen you have in your facility from a single entry point. And at the same time, you can offer uh, cognitive, but also lack linguistic accessibility to your to your visitors. It was for, for broadcasters, for TV, for YouTube streamings, and, and whatever. With YouTube streamings, it's a bit tricky because you know YouTube. It's delay of YouTube. It's a bit uh, it's a bit flexible, let's say. And then it's not. But but for, for broadcasters or for feature exhibitions, it works. It works perfectly. So I think that this is the this is the the really of course it's low and start a compile and that, that's why we are working with, with Pilar. So you, you can send any kind of video, audio, or whatever following your your rules. You know that that it's nice because at the end it's not any more than, than what we were doing. But that's nice. And also another interesting thing that we I think that we can have to, we, we need to put on on the table. Is that we can offer additional features for us? Accessibility should be an inclusive tool. It should be something like you are delivering a tool for everybody that also offers accessibility, because in this way you are more inclusive. So the same the same application can be used for offering uh, additional information before the show, during the show, and after the show for for loyalty services, smart marketing, and all this stuff. But during the show, for example, we, 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 we used to do a lot of a lot of fancy things. I mean, we, we play with the with the audience, with the whole audience. I mean, we put colors, we put lights, we put sound, we put any kind of stuff in order to engage and dynam dynamize the audience. That, so that that's nice. And then at the same time, for those that need it, we offer accessibility. But it's not anymore something for a small bunch of people. It's a, it's a, it's something for everybody that also talk. The accessibility people. Of course, now that it's more than 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 let's say a, a trendy thing. I mean, it can be used for emergency situations. So you can send at any time any kind of information to everybody, a specific group of people, or even an individual life. And you can send personalized emergency rules according to where you are, what you need, and who you are, for example. And I think that we we, we have demonstrated it that it works, the technology works. We have done it in, for example, in Mexico for, for, for the Carlos Steam Foundation, Telmex Telcel Foundation, with 10,000 people simultaneously in the same auditorium in order to engage people and do some fancy things. 
So that means that, that, that shows the robustness and the strong of the technology. Uh, we use it in the European environment, I'll show you. And we, and we have done a lot of experiments here in the foundation that is our, let's say, sandbox for experimentation where we are able to play and, and try new things. So, it, 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 and, and finally, we did it for the bridal uh, event here in Barcelona this year that it was something like digital experience, you know, these kind of things, as a few second screen for those people watching it uh, live on, on Vimeo or YouTube. So, I think that it's, it's, it's a nice tool, really strong, really scalable, so it works. We have te tested in our lab with 70,000 people, but it, it, and in real environments with 10,000 simultaneous people in the same, in the same space, and it works. Uh, at the end, it's not a really, uh, the, the technology is really scalable, and then the delivery of the content is really balanced and all this stuff. Of course, no problem when sending text, and, and we have a good strategies for downloading medias before be pre-recorded pre medias before starting the event and all the stuff. So I think mean, that's why we are able to do really live and synchronized uh, actions with the whole audience. I think it's a soft transition because at the end it's not anymore that than a delivery platform. So it works below all all or most already existing accessibility services. So it, it can easily plug in to your system and, and give extra functionalities. And I think that's all. I, I don't want to, to put more attention because I prefer to, to go for the questions and answers and all this stuff. The tool is already there, it's working. I mean, of course, like always, we, have, we, we, we need to keep improving everything, you know? And, and even more now, jumping into this new world for us, that is the accessibility services, but let me, Change the 